afternoon, family and friends. We have come here today to celebrate the wedding of Kelly Martin and Dane Bailey. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Joe Donovan, and I will be officiating the ceremony along with my lovely co-officiant, Miss Sarah North. On behalf of Dane and Kelly, thank you all for being here. They are delighted that everyone has come to share in their joy in these beautiful surroundings. By our presence here with them today, we celebrate the fact that Kelly and Dave have made each other more excited to be alive and prouder to be alive 
than either had previously believed possible. I've read that while at a lavish party thrown by a multi-billionaire, a famous author was asked how it made him feel to realize that only the day before, the host had probably made more money than the author's most popular novel had grossed nationwide in over 40 years. The author responded, I have something he can never have. When asked what that was, he replied, the knowledge that I've got enough. Now, I don't hang out with famous authors, and there are noticeably few lavish events thrown by multi-billionaires penciled in on my calendar. I did, however, ride in an elevator with Don King whenever I was in high school. <laughs> Even considering my proximity to greatness then, I believe it is a person, person's relationships, not their fame or fortune, that is the true measure of their success. Forget Wall Street and Tinseltown, relationships are the only thing substantial about what we create or defend or maintain in this world. All the rest is hoopla. Congratulations, Kelly and Dane, on your immense success and on knowing when you've got enough. Near the end of his life, another author, Mark Twain, asked himself what it was we all lived for. He came up with six words that satisfied him. The good opinion of our neighbors. Neighbors are the people who know you, the ones that see you, can talk to you, to whom you may have been of some help or beneficial stimulation. They are not nearly as numerous as the fans of, say, Ben Folds or Lady Gaga, though their taste may be more discriminating. My hope for the two of you is that you will continue to earn the good opinions of your neighbors, not only for your skills, undeniable charm, and good looks, but even more so for the fearlessness, thoughtfulness, and decency that I have seen you both demonstrate time and time again. I have one more hope, too, and this one goes not only for Kelly and Dane, but also for everyone else here. I hope that when things are really going well, you'll be sure to notice it. I'm talking about simple occasions, not great victories. Maybe drinking lemonade on a hot afternoon in the shade, smelling the aroma of a nearby bakery, or fishing and not caring if you catch anything or not, or hearing somebody all alone playing piano really well in the house next door. On occasions like these, I hope you'll say out loud, if this isn't nice, what is? Sarah and I will now read passages that each of us have chosen for the occasion. I'll be reading a few words from The Beatles, The Decemberists, Jack Johnson, and John Pine. There's nothing you can make that can't be made. No one you can save that can't be saved. Nothing you can do, but you can learn how to be you, and time is easy. There's nothing you can know that isn't known, Nothing you can see that isn't shown. Nowhere you can be that isn't where you're meant to be. It's easy, all you need is love. This is the story of your right red ankle and how it came to meet your leg and how the muscle bone and sinews tangled and how the skin was softly shaped and how it whispered, oh, adhere to me, for we are bound by symmetry and what differences our lives have been, we together make a limb. This is the story of your right red ankle. Our dreams, they are made out of real things like a shoebox of photographs with sepia tone loving. Love is the answer, at least for most of the questions in my heart. Like why are we here, and where do we go, and how come it's so hard? It's not always easy, and sometimes life can be deceiving. I'll tell you one thing, it's always better when we're together. When I get older, losing my hair, many years from now, will you still be sending me a valentine, birthday greetings, bottle of wine? If I'd been out till quarter to three, would you lock the door? Will you still need me? Will you still feed me when I'm 64? I could be handy mending a fuse when your lights have gone. You can knit a sweater by the fireside. Sunday mornings, go for a ride. Doing the garden, digging the weeds, who could ask for more? Will you still need me? Will you still feed me when I'm 64? In spite of ourselves, we'll end up sitting on a rainbow. And against all odds, honey, we're the big door prize. No. We're going to spite our noses right off of our faces. There won't be nothing but big old hearts dancing in our eyes. This reading is from The Velveteen Rabbit by Marjorie Williams. The skin horse had lived longer in the nursery than any of the others. He was so old that his brown coat was bald in patches and showed the seams underneath, and most of his hairs and his tail had been pulled out to string bead necklaces. He was wise, for he had seen a long succession of mechanical toys arrive to boast and swagger, and by and by break their mainsprings and pass away. And he knew that they were only toys and would never turn into anything else. For magic is very strange and wonderful, and only those things that are old and wise and experienced, like the skin horse, understand all about it. 
What is real? asked the rabbit one day, when they were lying side by side near the nursery fender before Nana came to tidy the room. Does it mean having things that buzz inside you and a st uh, stick out handle? Real isn't how you were made, said the skin horse. It's a thing that happens to you. When someone loves you for a long, long time, not just to play with, but really loves you, then you become real. Does it hurt? asked the rabbit. Sometimes, said the skin horse, for he was always truthful. When you are real, you don't mind being hurt. Does it happen all at once, like being wound up, he asked, or bit by bit? It doesn't happen all at once, said the skin horse. You become. It takes a long time. That's why it doesn't happen often to people who break easily, or have sharp edges, or who have to be carefully kept. Generally, by the time you are real, most of your hair has been loved off, and your eyes drop out, and you get loose in the joints and very shabby. But these things don't matter at all, because once you are real, you can't be ugly, except to people who don't understand. If the best man and maid of honor could bring the reins, Kelly Dane please face each other. Now it's time for the exchange of vows. Kelly and Dave, do you promise to remember always that above all else, you are here to help each other get through this thing, whatever it is? Do you promise that even when you are old and feeble, you will host private dance parties, even if, though you may be the only two in attendance? <laughs> Kelly, do you promise to swoon over each and every creation of Dave's, be it beer, music, or otherwise, and to forever be his number one fan? James, you promised to protect Kelly from amphibious creatures, infatuated neighbors, and fashion faux pas, even under threat of physical violence. Thank you. <laughs> you both promise to remain thoughtful and caring and make this a better world for each other than it was before either of you died. Dane, repeat after me. Kelly, I feel and think as much as you do. Kelly, I feel and think. I care about many of the things you care about, even though most people don't care about them. As long as I am here, you will never be alone. Kelly, please repeat after me. Dane, I feel and think as much as you do. I care about many of the things you care about, even though most people don't care about them. <laughs> As long as I am here, you will never be alone. Now, by the power vested in me by the Church of Spiritual Humanism in the United States Territory of the Virgin Islands, I pronounce you man and wife. Today, it is now legal for you to kiss Kelly. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 